Okay, here we are back in Dreamweaver. I'm ready to take a look at that layout that we just created in Fireworks. Now, uh, in this little sample website I've created, you can see I've made a little template here, um, which is you know, a very simple template, table layout, a little graphical banner in there, a few uh, tables here with columns in, and a couple of editable regions. Now, what I'd like to do is replace this template with uh, the layout that I've just created. So let me close this. I'll close it in a second. Um, now I'm going to come over here to my Files panel in Dreamweaver and navigate down to that layout folder that I created and if I open that up I will see all the stuff that Fireworks generated. So it generated this, it generated this HTML file here at the top and all these graphics. Now the majority of these graphics are the buttons if you kind of look at their names closely you'll see um, the layout R1, R2, those are rows. So you can see on row 2 here most of these graphics um, from there all the way down to here are the, uh, the buttons that make up that row. So um, those all sort of go together so I'm not going to worry too much about those. And the other ones here you can see this row 1, column 1, that's the banner across the top this R3C1 right there, that is the middle section, that big white section, and R4C1, the fourth row down there, that's the footer. And then we got a little space here, here to help us with our old school tables. All right, so I'm going to open up this layout, and you can see that um, it looks just about like it did in Fireworks, except this time it is cut up into pieces. So if I select these things, they are graphical um, <coughs> images. I'm all set inside of this table. You can see it's got it's a table of five rows, ten columns, kind of a little bit more stuff than we need, um, but luckily we're not going to have to see most of that. Now, um, to get started here, uh, what I need to do is uh, set this layout up so that I c so that it can function. Now, um, the most important piece is this. Let me just make this a little smaller here. Um, is this middle section here because that's where my content is going to go. Now this next technique is a technique um, that is used pretty often. It's the idea of putting an image, um, taking it out of this inline um, mode that it's in. In this case it's an image that's inside the cell of a table which basically means I can't put anything else in there. This image needs to be a background image. Now we're just going to use the properties of the table cell to make it a background image and if I was using CSS I would be using uh, CSS to write a rule, a class to put this in as a background image uh, or a selector. Um, so what I first need to do is to select this image here. You can see I've got this big piece selected. I can see down in my property bar that it really is RC, R3C1. So I'm going to select that, push delete that goes out so that's no longer a, in that image but I do need that image back in there because if I leave that out then uh, my layout looks very funny so it needs to go back in as a background image okay so if I click inside there you can see I don't know if you can see but my cursor is blinking over there on the left side about in the middle that's the uh, default alignment properties I'm going to just change that I'm going to say to the center and vertically to the top Okay, now that doesn't matter for what we're doing now, but in a minute when we start putting content in there, that will matter. So what I need, this cell right here, it needs this R3C1 as the background image. So when I click inside that cell, um, now I need to find where I can put this in as a, as a background image inside of that cell. Now, um, since we're going to be using HTML, I'll just do this in the code. I'm going to click inside that cell select the TD tag down here and uh, I can just go all the way to code view if I want and I can see right there there's the cell that I'm working inside of I'm gonna click right in at the last value there after that V align equals top in quotes just right before that closing carrot push the space bar I get a little background uh, that comes up uh, double click on that and it'll say alright you want to browse for that image and if I browse for it, I will find it here in the, in the layouts. And remember, I've talked about the name of it. It's R3C1, so it's that one. That's going to become my background graphic. And just drop that in there. 
and when I go back you can see it just wrote very simply background equals in quotes then the name of that image I'm going to go back to the design view you'll see that that image now is in there as the background image okay. and if I started putting I could start putting text in here but it would flow over the sides and go out here into the into outside of the border so what I need to do is I need to contain my stuff so I'm actually going to insert another table inside of here and I want this table just to be really simple, one row and maybe two columns, because I might put a, uh, a vertical, uh, uh, another little navigation or some little sidebar down here. And the table width needs to be exactly whatever width we made that background rectangle in, Dream we I mean, in Fireworks. And I made it 770 pixels. I don't want any border. Um, a little bit of cell padding is OK. No cell spacing. I'm going to say OK. Okay, you can see that table goes in and it's sitting right dead center on top of that background. Let me just, I'm just going to pull this over a little bit. So I get two columns here. So this is going to be a um, menu goes here. Let me just put a little text in and possibly content. All right, so just some placeholder text. Now that table that I just put in, that little two one row, two column table, it is going to stretch to fit whatever content I put in. And as soon as it comes down here to the, and hits this edge, then this image will just repeat. This is the, this row will stretch and the other rows will stay the same. And then my background image will repeat. So I will always get that nice, um, that nice white background with the border and it'll look sort of like one piece. You can see as I start pushing down now, um, then this just grows automatically uh, with me there. So I'm going to get rid of that stuff. All right, so now I have my uh, layout that I brought in from Fireworks. I've created it and uh, I've modified it a little bit by taking that middle slice out that row three C1 slice out, and then put that put it back in as the background image of that cell. So I'm going to save these changes, and then uh, before I go any further, I want to save this as a template. Okay, and I can see there's already a template in there. So I'm just going to name this one. This is my my layout template, or or uh, yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, if I was sure right now, I could just copy over that and name it the exact same thing, and it would replace that old one, and all my pages would be updated automatically. But I'm not quite ready for that. I'm just going to say this is my layout, um, and just click Save, and update the links. Yes. Okay. So now I've got two templates: a main template, and it's got Edit Region 3 and Edit Region 4 on it, and I've got a layout template. Okay. In the next tutorial, I will go through and finish this template so it's ready to use and then go through the process of applying the template to existing pages that were made with that other template and applying this template to new pages.